And now to talk about the underbelly of college football recruiting and all that's coming up after the bumper. Don't be cornering me. Hold up. Time. You gotta help me with that, that corner sh**. <laughs> What's up, Ken Folk? It's RJ Young. I am not on a step mail. Consider hitting the like and subscribe button because I upload a video every single day. It's always college football related, sports related. We have a good time. And today, we need to talk about what I think is a really good window into the underbelly of recruiting with the news coming out that TCU signee Dominic Richardson is not going to attend Texas Christian in the fall. Richardson was a member of the 2020 class signing in the early signing period after an outstanding career at Oklahoma City's Bishop McGinnis Quality School, Quality Kiddo, 169 carries, 1,700 yards rushing, and like 17 touchdowns en route to a appearance in the state finals of the 5A championship in Oklahoma. Richardson was going to be a part of a rushing attack that was going to need his help. With Sewu Alanalua and Darius Anderson both, I mean, basically they're aging out. They both signed with the Dallas Cowboys. TCU also averaged about 204 yards rushing per game, and that was third best in the Big 12. They were really good running the football, but they could get... They could get better, right? Especially when Max Duggan, if you're able to run something like zone read and triple option type schemes, it'd be interesting. And then with the landing of Zach Evans, you got the first five-star guy to ever commit and sign to Texas Christian, and you have a change agent, the kind that I believe vaults Texas Christian into the conversation that is who plays in the Big 12 championship game opposite Oklahoma. Texas Christian has been really good good when they've been good enough on offense and Zach Evans does a lot to help them with that with nearly 5,000 yards rushing in his career 311 carries averaging 15.65 yards per carry which is only second to Bijan Robinson who averaged like 17 yards per carry he's going to Texas and Zach Evans was not just the best player in Texas 2020 class he was absolutely for some the best tailback in the 2020 class. B. John Robinson has something to say about that, I'm sure. But you would take one or both and be fine, right? But one of those guys appearing at Texas Christian is the news here. So I wondered how this would shape out because it felt like Texas Christian had a full boat in 2020 and had a full boat that they wanted to get toward in 2021. But now it seems that either one, Dominic Richardson does not like how the running back depth chart might look once he gets to campus, or two, Gary Patterson might have had to, to pull a scholarship. Now, having signed that last letter of intent, I doubt that you could pull a scholarship after that because it's binding for like a year, right? But how that goes and what else goes into the thinking around this move just before the summer is interesting. And also, adding here, Richardson got his full release of his national letter of intent, which is what, ironically, Zach Evans got when he signed with Georgia. It also underscores what I've told you and what I truly believe, which is it doesn't matter whether or not uh, you are a problem, whether you're a problem child, whether you come with some baggage. If you can play and you put people in positions to win championships, they're going to put up with whatever it is that you have going on. And it doesn't matter how good a person you are. If you don't have the talent to put people over the top into a championship situation, you become expendable real quick. And this is true in all matter of business, specifically in the United States. Like, I'm doing a lot of heavy research into pro wrestling because, one, I like pro wrestling. I love pro wrestling. And, two, because I think the business is so interesting, especially in the conversation with entertainment and with media. Because as a part of a wrestling program, you can be the main event today and be out on your butt tomorrow. It's such a fickle effort kind of business that makes stars and just as quickly rip stars away. You can be a millionaire superstar one day and you can be uh, a guy pumping gas the next. And that's the same with college football. I mean, Maurice Claret, I believe, is a really great example of this in that we all thought when Maurice Claret was at Ohio State that he was next and he was right to try to challenge the NFL on its draft policy because he wanted to come out after two years and not three. And then it ended up not going so well for him in that run. But a guy that totally could have played college or excuse me, college NFL football out of high school is Adrian Peterson, right? Those guys exist, 
but they're once in a generation guys. All to say, you don't know until you know that it's over. And Zach Evans is just beginning. Dominic Richardson might have already reached the ceiling. Don't know. I really, I'm, I wish him well. I want him to succeed. And I, I hate that these things happen, but they do. And it seems unfair. And that's the part of this that I want stressed. When we talk about committable offers, when we talk about scholarships being pulled, when we talk about the kids flexing their five stars and saying, I'm going to make up my mind or I'm going to change my mind, you see I'm siding with the player more often than not because at the end of the day, they very they have very little leverage. So when they do have a little bit of leverage that they can use, I'm all for them using it, right? Because Gary Pattis is going to make a million dollars and then some. And he's been making millions of dollars and then some for 20 years at Texas Christian. A kid like Zach Evans has this limited window for which his athletic ability can carry him. And we're talking about perhaps the next seven years, right? Really, because I think that he would outlive the three-year contract or the, or the three-year period in the NFL and maybe make it to a second contract. We'll see, right? It's all conjecture right now. But more than that, what Dominic Richardson walked into, which is that he thought he was going to be one of the guys on that depth chart with an opportunity to help Texas Christian as a true freshman, Darwin Barlow coming off of a red shirt notwithstanding. And now the, the landscape changed just that quickly because Gary Patterson decided to take in Zach Evans. I'm sure with Sonny Cumbie and them saying, please let us have this five-star tailback and let's get him whatever he needs to get to get him on campus because he is enrolled and he's supposed to show up there in the fall and, and turns Texas Christian into, if not a contender, a very interesting story that we're all going to pay attention to. And that's going to pay dividends for TCU football because Texas Christian football would love to have more eyeballs on it, especially when they play in what we might call lesser football games, right? Games against the SMUs of the world, the North Texas of the world, the Cows of the world, right? Because they got that game on the schedule earlier for like September. I feel bad for Dominic Richardson, but I think he's going to get an opportunity to play college football at the high major level here very soon, if not you know, by the end of June, might even end up at Oklahoma State, the way things are going and the way that we've seen uh, sort of some kids enter the transfer portal that I didn't expect to, right? But also more than that, when you talk about the kids and you talk about how they flip their commitments or they back off their commitments or it's all soft until they're signed, even when they're signed, you can see the stuff is changeable. And with the advent of the NCAA transfer portal, Nothing is sacred. Mac, Mac Brown has the best quote about this era of college football, which is to say, kiss your kids in the morning and kiss your kids at night because in the next morning they could be in the transfer portal. And Mac, who is an outstanding recruiter as proof of what North Carolina is doing in the 2021 class, is a great example of what I believe we all should think about when we talk about the kids and when we talk about the coaches as well because what do coaches do? They take jobs elsewhere. Sucks for Dominic Richardson, but it also gives an insight into the part of college football recruiting that nobody really talks about. All right, that's it for me. Doses.